welcome to my channel it's Afia here so it's back to school and I wanted to do a few videos to help you guys that are going back to uni or are just starting uni if you are a medical student or you are not this video is gonna it's just like tips and tricks to ace your semester to ace your year to get good results and to prepare like literally um, so I'm in my fourth year of medical school as most of you know and there's been a lot of trials and errors a lot of things that I have done correctly and a lot of things that I have done incorrectly okay <laughs> so I have gone through the trash I have gone through the good I've gone through the bad I've gone through the ugly honey and I'm just here to just give you guys some tips give you guys help so that you can be prepared and you can do well you know in your course in whatever you're doing so you know prepared I wrote it all down so I don't forget so I've got everything here so um one thing that I normally say is fail to prepare prepare to fail so you need to make sure that you're preparing and you're making the effort. Say you want to do like 10 things in a day and you prepare for those 10 things. You might only do six, you might only do seven, but it's better than doing zero because you do not prepare to do anything. You see, you see what I'm going to? This stuff that I'm telling you, like it's not gonna be 100, you're not gonna be on it 100%. It's not every time that you're gonna study. It's not every day that you're gonna study, but if you put in the effort and you make the effort to start, you put in that effort, like it's much more, it's much, it's much more likely that you're gonna do it, okay? So, um, to begin with, I'm just gonna say like medicine wise, but this is for everybody. Know all your subjects for the semester and all your exams. So what you first thing you need to do is have a timetable. This is my timetable. Um, this is just what it looks like. It, it seems like a lot, but I'm group nine. So this is just my timetable just here. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's how it goes. Um, there are 14 groups, so that's why it looks like so big, but get your timetable, know what you're going to be doing every day, Monday to Friday. So as I said, in, in Bulgaria, in Pleven, we have practicals and we have um, lectures. Lectures are optional, some of them are compulsory because they will take attendance, but most of them are actually optional. So you don't have to go if you want to go and it's good that you go but it's unlikely that you go to everything let me just be real practicals they are attendance based like 99% of them are attendance based so they will if you don't go sorry guys I'm fighting with my hair if you don't go to your practicals <laughs> you need to go like those ones they need like they have like um you can miss two a semester you can miss three um it's very unlikely that your teacher is like oh don't come but most of them you have to go so you need to have your timetable and to know okay for me personally on mondays i start eight o'clock i mean i start eight o'clock every day let's let's not get it twisted on monday i start eight o'clock i have endocrinology from eight to half nine then i have cardiology from 10 to half 11 and then I have orthopedics from 12 to half one. Then I have a lecture till from three o'clock till half four and then a lecture from five to half six. Don't know about that one. Don't know about that one. <laughs> but yeah, so on Monday I'll finish at um, half six, but that's cause there's lectures. But my practicals finish at half one, okay. Then Tuesday, I will have dermatology at 8 to half 9, surgery at 10 to half 11, then I'll have lectures in between. So half 12 to 2, I have neurology lecture, and then 4 to half 5, I have orthopedics lecture. So that's just how it goes. Like, I don't want to be different, that's just how it goes. I have practicals, like, literally every morning. So 
you know I know that now so with my subject of this semester what I do is I like to have my subject and my exam so I know what subjects I'm doing and what exams I'm having because obviously you're gonna study more for your exams than like your subjects so like you know I was talking about pathoanatomy pathology I had that we did that for like two years straight before we had the exam so at the beginning of the course I wasn't as bothered because I didn't have the exam till two years later but then if I'm doing a course this semester and I have the exam I'm gonna obviously be on it because I know that rah, I have an exam at the end of the semester okay so my subject of this semester that I'm doing is endocrinology cardiology orthopedics dermatology, surgical diseases, anesthesiology, neurology, emergency medicine, obstetrics and gynecology and oncology. So these are what I'm doing as a subject. Um, I've seen that other universities for medicine, they do um, one topic or like one subject for like maybe a few weeks and then the exam and drop it. We do like all of these at once, so we'll just keep having them back and forth. So it's different, different universities teach medicine different, but this is just how it is. You do all these subjects, two, four, six, eight, I'm doing 10 subjects at the same time. So for my exams, this is what I'm 100% sure. I think I might have another one, but I'm not 100% sure, so I need to find out. So internal medicine, which is a four in one exam. So I have pulmonology, which I did last semester, rheumatology, which I did last semester, endocrinology, which I'm doing this semester, and cardio, which I started last semester, but I'm doing it this semester. So all these four are in one exam. So like on the day, we'll have, we'll pick out of the four, and I think you pick three, and then you do your essays and then you go to the specific teachers so there'll be like four examiners there and then you do it's like a four in one exam you guys pray for me <laughs> then i have obstetrics and gynecology exam which is going to be a big one because we've been doing that for like a year now um emergency medicine i'm excited about that it seems interesting oncology like cancer that seems interesting neurology that's a big one too so this is these are the exams that i have so now i know roughly what subjects i'm taking what exams i'm having gives you like you know do you get what i mean it gives you that knowledge like okay okay this is what's going on i need to be more clued on onto these things because they are part of my exams and if i don't know something from before like if i'm doing something else i don't know and i, I know i don't have the exam I'm not as bothered because I'm like, I can still, I still have time. But if I have the exam, I need to be clued on. Like cardio, for me personally, I don't know what's going on. Let me just be real because <laughs> ECGs, you need, with the telling us that we need to read an ECG, um, I really still don't know how to do that. So I need to, that's something that I know that I need to work on. So if it's something, you know when you know what you have to do you can sort of figure it out okay so now that you know your subject you get this synopsis for each subject or have it in your phone so like even how I had my timetable you can have a copy on your phone I just like having things like paper form but I have friends and I have people that I um, study with that they like to have things on their phone on their computers you can do that too I'm you know do whatever you need to do okay so I'm going to show you guys what a synopsis looks like. So this is what a synopsis looks like. In every subject you have a synopsis and it's like every question that will come up in the exam. So I told you before like the way to do things here is you pick up an essay or you pick up two essays or three essays at random and you write on it. So all these questions, so what this is for neurology. Um, there is 60, 60 questions that I can get. I can get any of these 60 questions in the exam. So when I'm studying for neurology, I start off with these. I start off with them. You can start off however you want, but I like to do things in order because I feel like it gets easier. So like it's a foundation type of thing. So if I understand reflex, then I can understand the next one. Blah, blah, blah. So I like to start from number one, but you can start from wherever you want. 
but this is what I use to study because if you're not using this and you're just studying what are you studying based on you're just doing you're studying but you're not being focused and you're not yeah you're not aligning to the specific things they're gonna ask you you can study in general but if you know exactly what they want from you then you can study properly so I'll read you question number one is reflex activity esteroceptive and proprioceptive reflexes reflex abnormalities pathological reflexes pyramidal tract signs spinal brainstem and axial automatisms that's a lot in one topic let me tell you how let me tell you girl it's what they do it's what they do <laughs> that's a lot in one topic so it's just about like reflexes um and you have to do it because you know when someone's in a coma there's a i don't remember now but i did it last semester there's a type of reflex or a sign that they exhibit like if someone is if you put my hand up yeah it's not gonna fall down because i can keep it up but if someone is in a coma or someone is dead when you put the hand up it just falls back down because they don't have that reflex do you get what i mean so that's like this stuff is important so that's question one then there's question two and stuff so as i'm studying i study according to this so that i know what i'm studying is definitely going to be in the exam i'm not just studying based on what the spirit leads because honey the spirit will lead you to an f okay so yeah that's what a synopsis is so um for each, each subject, I need to have one of this, and um, you can have it in your phone. We, in the uni, thankfully, they have like a folder, so every year they have all the synopsis that you need, which is very helpful, so you can know every little thing. So, these are my folders. Um, these are some, some folders of things that I have started, and these are things that, from like last semester, and you know, I'm kind of getting it ready for this semester. So I put things in folders because I find it's a lot easier. So I'm just gonna show you. This is my surgery folder. This is my dermatology folder, which I'm just starting this semester. But I find it like, cause I'm into skincare and I'm into beauty, I find it interesting. So I've already started studying for it. Um, Miki, I know, but <laughs> I'm excited about it. Um, pulmonology which is what I told you that is part of the big can you see how big this folder is it's part of um, the internal medicine um, cardio rheumatology which is also part of it and obstetrics and gynecology so I'll show you how I like study normally so before every class um before every practical not necessarily lecture because sometimes the lecturers don't actually teach according to what you think they're going to teach they just you go in there you're like what are we doing today but let um practical wise once you go in we always have um sign notices notice boards outside the the department which is quite good and they tell you what like you're going to be doing every time which is really good so you kind of know what you're going to be doing so it's good to study beforehand um this is something that i know is not going to be very realistic for you to do all the time because there's so much to do like you saw how my week is so like on monday i have like three practicals back to back to back it's hard for me to study all for all three on Monday, then what I have on Tuesday study for all three and study, do you get what I mean? Like it's basically meaning that I don't sleep. <laughs> so it's not something that you can do all the time, but try your hardest if you can be time, if you can manage your time well, try your hardest to um, study beforehand because it really does help. So with surgery last semester, um, we had um, our surgery doctor because we went to the, we go to the hospital for all our practicals so she she was not playing with us and she wanted us to know to study a lot before we came which so i will just show you quickly so these are all things that i did before so i did um thyroid cancer goiter um what was this congenital anomalies of the facial region um, open and closed injuries, pneumothorax. So like I studied before I went and then also the thing is when you go in class, when you go to like the practicals at the hospital, 
she asks you questions and then she gives you extra information so many times you will add on to your notes so these notes that they look a bit they're not going to be the cutest notes let me tell you that for free but one thing is you're making them you've understood it before you went to the lecture or the practical when you get to the practical they expound on what you know so you're getting extra information you're putting it in when you come back home you can either remake the notes or just add to it sometimes i remake the notes because I, I like them to be cute but sometimes you don't have the time <laughs> so you just leave it as it is but you've already done half the work so when you're now studying for your exam, you're like, oh, I've done this. You just take it off. So that's the best thing to do. It's not always possible, but, you know, try and do that. Okay, so when making notes, everyone is different. Um, people like to read books. Only people like to watch videos. Everybody, like, learns differently. I I feel like I'm a, I'm a multi-learner. I like to read books. I like to watch videos. Um... What else do I do? And I also like to look at the PowerPoint. So if, if the teacher gave a presentation, I like to look at that because what I've realized is over here, they like you to give them what they gave you. So if they gave you a PowerPoint and they told you exactly like all the points and you've gone and read a book. So the thing with medicine is the same most of the time, but there's extra information sometimes. So there might be five points in her lecture and you read four points somewhere else and you've now given four points in the exam she'll be like where's the fifth point i put it in my lecture so <laughs> so it's really good for you to you know use all the resources but make sure that your main resource your main resource is what was given to you. So if they gave you a PowerPoint presentation, honey, you make sure you know that PowerPoint presentation. You can watch videos to give you like, and I watch videos to give me like a general understanding. I read books for that, but then make sure you know the main things. So I'll show you what kind of PowerPoints we get. You guys know I did pharmacology last semester. So this is like something that was given to us um, in class, so you know. And you can see that you can write you can write stuff in there you can you know it's your sticky you know whatever so these ones are like her information but when i did pharmacology i read i used the book which i don't have this over there i used the book as well that kind of explained what she was saying in a better way and i also watched the video so for pharmacology i think maybe if you guys want me to do a video on how i study for pharmacology um, I can do that. There's um, a guy on YouTube called Speedy Pharmacology, Speedy Pharmacology that he's so amazing. I told all my friends about him. Someone told me about him and I told everybody else about him. He's really good. Um, Armando has a look. He's really good as well. Um, there's a lot of different resources out there. So just make sure that you can use that. But also in due time don't waste too much time because there's this guy called um nabin dr nabin lectures or something he's amazing but he his lectures are like one hour and i'm thinking sir 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 <laughs> you need to just make that 20 minutes okay so just make sure that you like figure out how best you learn and yeah and then when you're making your notes if you want to make your notes this is one thing that me and my friends have been talking about it takes a long time to make notes and some people have to make notes some people don't have to make notes i've realized that i don't have to make notes but if i can i make them so i print out a lot of um presentations when i was home i used my dad's printer because I don't have money to be paying for that. So this is my, this is like a printout that I took of rheumatology. So I've read it for rheumatology last semester as well because I found it quite interesting and made notes. And um, the guy was really like, he wanted us to remember everything that we were doing. So these are like notes that I made for rheumatology. So, rheumatoid arthritis um juvenile chronic arthritis lyme's disease writers 
um, ankylosing spondylitis. Psoriatic arthritis. So we've done like most of the stuff, but I printed out all the presentations that he done and then I'm just gonna go through that for the exam with my information. I'm not making any more notes. So like you can print out um, stuff and then go that way so that you're not wasting too much time. And then when you're making your notes, try and be as concise, don't write everything. I have learned from my mistakes. I used to write three, four pages. You're not gonna remember that, honey. You're not gonna remember all that. But try and understand by yourself, remember by yourself, and then try and write your notes in a way that it's not too much. So yesterday, I told you guys that um, I'm excited about dermatology. What is it now? <sighs> so I made notes for it, and this is topic number one. Um, so it's structure of the skin, layers of the epidermis, physiological function of epidermal components, regenerative properties of the epidermis and protective function of the skin. So I just wrote, all this topic is in one, like literally one sheet of paper. Don't do too much, don't because you're not going to remember. So I talked about the skin, I talked about the different layers of this, um, different what the skin contains. So it has the epidermis, dermis, subcutaneous tissue, connective tissue. Then I went into the layers of the epidermis, four different layers, what each of each and every one of them does, um, what you can find in the epidermis, and then at the bottom I put in other words, this is like what I'm taking from it. So what can I remember like without looking? So I can tell you that the skin is a protective layer. Do you know what I mean? Like things like that when you study you need to go over what you have studied because many times we have studied and we've gone into the exam and you're like you get the topic and you're like oh my god i, I did this topic oh my god like you can't remember because you never went over it you need to go over the topics and you need to repeat and repeat and repeat and it's time consuming but once you know something and you know it and you know it and you know it when you get in the exam that's it you're done you know you know you know you know you're ready yeah you know you're ready so you need to go over stuff um and i think that's basically it so just repeat 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 um if you guys have any specific things that you want me to do regarding studying studying medicine let me know i keep getting questions from you guys um, but it's like I answer them like on Instagram and stuff. But I think I might do an extra like Q and A. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, and someone said they wanted me to do like a study with me type of thing. So I'll try and do that. I'll figure out like logistics and stuff like that. Um, also, some of you guys need to get yourselves together. You guys are asking me questions that you can find on Google please hello hello you guys are gonna be doctors you're gonna be your big big people you know someone asked me how much is it for my uni i don't know i know how much i paid i paid seven i pay seven thousand euros every year but it changes all the time because new students and stuff like that just like in the uk i know it's roughly ten thousand but i don't know but for specific issues specific things like that that you know is going to be on the university website you need to go and you need to look for that stuff for yourself honey because i can't spoon feed you so stuff like that um i will do another video about coming to this uni what steps you need to take because people are asking me um admission and stuff like that i can tell you as much as i know i don't know everything but yeah um that's it thank you so much guys for watching um make sure you subscribe this is not for free <laughs> bye guys